Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and these are going to be our 2020 year overview videos. These are extremely important because we are coming into an era that some people are coining the golden era, you know, a quest towards the golden consciousness, all of those things. So we're going to see a lot of density blowing out of our lives, out of our world, and it might throw you off a little bit. So I wanted to do these videos so that you could be prepared <laughs> and you could have your energy set so that, you know, as things start to unfold, you can go with the flow, you can observe without investing and you'll be okay. All right. These are not scary times. These are not, this is not a threat. These are not videos to be like danger, 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 watch out. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about being in your awareness. So through these videos, it's my hope and my intention that this gives you uh, some bit of good information, something that will help you per sign. <laughs> and that's just to divvy up the audience. That way I can focus in on different energetic groups and, you know, make sure you're watching for your sun, your moon, your rising. You might want to watch for your Venus sign, you know, whatever works for you. But hopefully the information that comes through is exactly what you need to hear throughout the year to help you remain centered and be able to roll with whatever's coming right? <laughs> so if you would like to get a personal reading with me, you can just go to my website at angelsouls444.com. I will leave information in the description box below on courses. I may be putting out some courses having to do with getting prepared for 2020 and lots of other things. There's tons, there's a huge library of stuff there. So go check that out. And of course, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I'll leave all that information down below as well. If you want to just support me by subscribing and hitting that like, that's awesome too. So let's get into it. Hi there, Virgo. We are going to be looking at what is happening for you for 2020. But first, please make sure that you go and watch my video on 2020 and understand that that is kind of the basis of these readings. Also, we're not going to be talking a whole lot about surface level things. This is more about your higher consciousness, opening up into that uh, soul self and contributing your light to a collective light. All right. That's where we're at now. We're going to see a quick diminishment of very shallow approaches to spirituality. We're gonna see a sharp decline in uh, fortune telling kinds of readings and the like. So be very careful, just be mindful, okay? N not that those are bad, and I think that people will still do them if for nothing else for nostalgia's sake, right? Like if I go to, it's almost Halloween, so when I'm recording this. So uh, when I go to a Halloween party and someone has someone there doing a card reading, I mean, I get kind of dazzled. I think it's it's awesome, and you know, I, I you know, but I'm also not going to walk out of there going, oh, my life is now planned out by that reading, <laughs> right? Because I know I have free will, right? All right, so let's get into it. Here we have Saint Sinner, so you're feeling very conflicted this year, um, feeling like you're doing well, and then it seems like you get some reflection from the universe that you're not doing well. Uh, but remember, everybody else around you, they're also trying to awaken and they're trying to open up. And a lot of stuff that needs to still be cleansed is going to be coming up to the surface. So if you're being around people like that or you feel like you're being like that, it's a part of the process. We just want to try to be as good to each other as we can be. Mythic reality. <laughs> All that glitters is not gold, right? Serendipity. So you're freeing yourself. It's going to take a minute to figure this out but you'll get there. And Gaia, being very, very grounded and doing things for the good of the planet. And that means energetically. It doesn't mean, you know, being a social narcissist and going out and going, you know, let me, let me go do something charitable, but I'm going to keep taking like a million pictures of it, not to promote the cause, but to show what a good person I am for being out here, right? So <laughs> yeah, it happens, right? So doing good for the universe energetically and for Gaia energetically. So as I said, the first card here is Saint Sinner. This is being back and forth. Uh, I feel good. It's like overcorrecting. It's like, I, I feel like I've been so good. I've been on my spiritual path. I'm in my higher consciousness. And then something comes along and you get really mad and you lose your temper and you're like, oh, I'm terrible. I shouldn't do that. Or as you start to come into the energies that we're dealing with and you're starting to do some more self-discovery, this is a lot of guilt and shame that starts coming up. There could have been things from the past that 
you didn't handle well um, and you just didn't have capacity to handle them well. You didn't have the know-how, you didn't have the understanding, okay? So this does talk about a lot of release. It talks about self-forgiveness and forgiving others and also asking for forgiveness. This is something that we don't talk about nearly enough in the spiritual community. It's always about us being the victims, right? I'm sure you've done stuff to people too. I'm sure I have hurt people's feelings too, right? It's time to make amends. It's time to go out there and admit our part in things, yes, and say, I'm sorry. If the person will not accept it, I've had that happen where, um, you know, I had a falling out with some people and I, you know, once we all kind of cooled down, I was like, oh, I could have communicated a little bit better. Yeah, that did kind of come off. I didn't say what I meant. I did, you know, I was acting as if they were in my head. And I reached out to them and I said, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry for not communicating. And I'm really sorry that this exploded the way that it did. And the people gave me the cold shoulder. This was a couple that I was friends with um, and getting to know. And um, well, uh, they were acquaintances, I guess, and we were working on a friendship. I guess that's more appropriate. Um, and then something happened and I felt disrespected. And instead of communicating properly, I just kind of, you know, came out and was like, the, you know. Uh, so I apologized for my part in that. And they gave me the cold shoulder. And I was like, huh. Okay, that's interesting. All right, you know, nothing from you? Okay. So if we are going to ask for forgiveness on something, it has to be done with the expectation that we're not going to get anything back, all right? Whether that's an acceptance of that apology or an apology because they're not, you know, they had a little, they kind of went off the rails a little bit too, you know, so they could have apologized as well. But they didn't, and there you go, and all you can do is your part, right? So the saint sinner says, say that one several times fast. <laughs> the saint sinner says that you can only do as much as you can do. And if you try to make amends and someone won't accept it, or if somebody is just insisting on still um, siphoning energy from being a victim, disconnect from that. You know what I mean? There's only so much you can do. Don't hang on. So the mythic reality some of, some of you out there, you're starting to realize that you've constructed your life around this uh, image of what you think you should be. And now you're deciding all this effort. I'm not ready for that castle in the sky or that castle in the sky. The closer I get starts to look a little bit like a spooky dungeon kind of place. <laughs> like it's not a castle in the sky anymore. It looks really run down like it's about to crumble into the sea. Um, everything is not cracked up to what it's supposed to be, right? Uh, and if you notice in this card, yes, there, I say this to people in personal readings too, but there's a rainbow there. And yes, that can uh, signify blessings, but look at this card, it's a little sepia toned. It's a little dulled down. The colors are a little browned out, okay? And so it's like your ego is telling you to go this way, this way, this way, this way. And this year is when you go, why am I doing this? I hate this. Why am, I, why am I going in this direction? This is a terrible idea. And you course correct. Okay. Now, for some of you, could that be difficult? Yes. Uh, for others, is it kind of like, I'm just going to take this curve and go, oh, look at that. Now I feel so much better, right? Uh, some of you, it just depends on who you are about how well you are going to handle it. But for most of you watching this, it looks like it's going to go pretty well because we have serendipity. When you finally realize and unlock yourself from expectations from pushing on yourself to finish something, to accomplish something, because the world says you are bad if you don't finish it or accomplish it. When you release yourself from that, now you have all this energy that can flow to you. And here's where, where the serendipity starts coming in. And now you have fresh ideas. You have fresh new ways to approach your life. But I should say, across the board, everything that you do should be in the highest good of everyone involved. The self-centeredness, um, the me, 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 we're coming out of that. And again, we're not going to do a hard turn overnight, but you're going to start seeing some really negative feedback from the universe, not as a punishment, but as a, a very stark realization that when I put this out into the universe, this is what comes back. Okay. <laughs> and you're just going to start understanding that pretty quickly. Also, you're going to be manifesting things at a faster rate. So you might put out there, okay, I want tons of money, but you don't specify for the highest good of everyone involved, or you don't specify, okay, I would love some money in here, but I want to make sure that nobody is harmed in me collecting this money. Okay. So this would mean no one has to die for you to get an inheritance. That's terrible. You know, when people are, yeah, I got inherited. I didn't know him. Uh, 
still a human being that just went through a major transition and had a life story. So let's not, okay? Uh, whether you knew them and had emotional connection to them or not, that's not how you want to manifest things, right? Or someone says, okay, I want love, I want love, I want that particular person, and you're going to be my love. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. I feel people doing that on me. Except I recognize it. You better watch it because I will, I will put the shields up and I, I don't intentionally reflect back to everybody, but I have some mirrors around me. If they reflect, so be it. You know what I mean? You're the one that put it out there. So, you know, trying to get someone to come near you that doesn't want to be your love partner, <laughs> you know, things like that. So be very, very careful and mindful what you do with some of these ideas that are coming through for you this year. And it, again, if you're in your heart space, if you're in your higher consciousness, if you're connected to your soul, these things will be automatic. You'll know exactly how to do it. You know what I mean? All right. So then we have Gaia doing things to help raise the vibration of the planet. Yes. And again, you know, before the approach was always, let's get into activism. That's still important. Well, let's call it advocacy because activism has a bit of a sting to it. It's kind of shouting. It's kind of pushing on people. And that has a certain energy about it. So, yes, let's get out there and save the animals. Yes, let's, you know, go do all that stuff. But you have to do your contribution on the energetic level, as we've been saying. Okay, so we're stepping up our game. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's see what we can do here for a color card for you. Do it about right there. And we have for you Aqua. Experience, peace, and calm. Another sign got this. Uh, the number is 33. So, again, throughout the year, if you can work on being in a place of peace and flowing and creating from that space as opposed from the intellect, from the ego, I know everybody said it's amazing to me. People are like, oh, I'm in the flow. I'm, I'm not doing that. And then they'll come and they'll ask for a reading and they're like, what can I do uh, to, uh, oh my God. Oh, oh, you guys. Oh, no. Look. Oh, that's so sad to me. Well, these are well-used, well-loved cards. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I saw it sticking out. I was like, what in the world? Um, anyway, sorry. So the people will come and get a, a reading with me. And then they're desperate for love or they're desperate for one particular person or, you know, and they're just putting this desperate energy out there. Now, if you're really going to be in the flow, you're going to be creating from a much more uh, peaceful place that's good for everybody. You're not going to be like throwing a tantrum if you don't get what you want. You know what I mean? Like it's that kind of thing. All okay? right. So the, the more calm you can be, the more heart centered you can be, uh, the more you do things out of joy, the better. All right, guys. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you so much love. and Take care.